Item number SCP-455 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Object SCP-455 cannot be moved nor contained in any structure. Containment must be made on-site. No exploration or testing is to be made on or in SCP-455. No personnel are to remain in close proximity for more than five minutes. All physical contact with SCP-455 is forbidden. Any personnel breaking this order are to be quarantined. Any hallucinations experienced near SCP-455 are to be recorded and logged. Any personnel experiencing hallucinations are to be transferred. Any personnel attempting to enter SCP-455 are to be restrained by any means deemed necessary. Description. SCP-455 is a large cargo ship currently run aground on the southern coast of Chile. Most of its structure is underwater and badly damaged, with rust coating 85-90% of all surfaces. Internal structure appears to be significantly larger than external dimensions, and is not flooded despite large holes visible on outer hull. Internal structure appears to be a random assembly of rooms, halls, and structures. Initial salvage routines reported rooms made of human teeth, an engine with tendon strips for timing belts, a hall extending for 182.88 meters or 600 feet beyond where the outer holes should terminate, an open gym room with steel walls as pliant as taffy, and numerous audio and visual hallucinations. Team was lost after reporting entry into central navigation. Rescue team lost after reporting the investigation of screaming in a cargo section. Doctor has suggested the use of robots to map the interior of SCP-455 after the failure of several manned exploration teams. Experiment Log 455 details the attempts to explore SCP-455 and information established despite their failures overall. Explorative Logs of SCP-455 First Encounter Initial reports of disappearance of a salvage operation regarding SCP-455 led to its classification in our databases. A research team of five members were dispatched to confirm status of civilian researchers. This team consisted of two field analysts and three security personnel. Due to the low threat level initially given to a beached cargo vessel, no direct contact was kept with this team. Team orders required one contact to their control headquarters every 24 hours. After three days of uneventful activity, team failed to report in, and after two days of lost contact, a secondary team was dispatched to investigate lapse in communication. This team consisted of ten standard field agents with standard gear for confrontation with humanoid aggressors. A search of the vicinity of SCP-455 discovered encampment of the first research team in a condition that suggested an anticipated return. A rice cooker left running for several days contained heavily burnt food. Research laptops were left on and running, powered by the camp's portable generator. An analysis of the reports on the laptop indicated minimal activity of note from the site or from SCP-455 up until the date of ceased communications. The last entry mentions recording of human voices coming from deep within SCP-455 and a departure of the team to investigate for possible missed survivors from the salvage operation. After reporting in the state of Team 1's camp, Team 2 was ordered to maintain constant radio contact through the remote system already on camp. What follows is an abbreviated transcript of the audio recorded during Team 2's investigation of SCP-455 in search of Team 1. HQ, this is T2L, please respond. T2L, this is HQ, we have you loud and clear, over. Understood, HQ, we are above deck on the vessel now. Sun is still up. We can see into the hold, but not very far. Flashlights also aren't helping matters much. We're foregoing direct descent into the hole and are going to use the stairs to the crew decks and access it from there so we aren't separated. Is this acceptable, HQ? Over. Roger, T2L. You have complete discretion from here forward, over. We've been out of contact with Team 1 for a couple days already. A few more minutes won't hurt them. Proceed swiftly but cautiously. Inconsequential audio deleted. HQ, this is T2L. We got an anomaly here, over. T2L, this is HQ. What's the situation? We're on deck three so far of the vessel, sir, but it has taken us like half an hour to get down this far. Something not quite right about the distance between floors for us to spend ten minutes getting between each. Understood, T2L. We suggest you send one member back up to the surface and then have him return. Please update us on the elapsed time. Over. Inconsequential audio deleted. T2L here. 
HQ. We sent a man up as advised and he returned in four minutes. Sent him back twice in a sprint, two minutes. We all recorded thirty to get down this far at least, and we all recorded our scouts' return times as well. This is definitely something inconsistent. Proceed as planned, T2L. Time lapses have been recorded but we see no need to abort mission over this. Please use precautions when these lapses occur and immediately try to raise us should you suspect one so we can confirm time since last contact. In addition, if radio silence is encountered, use utmost discretion. T2L respond. T2L. Fuck. Inconsequential audio deleted. HQ, this is T2L. Please repeat. T2L, where the flying fist fuck have you been? Um, we we were just talking, sir. How long ago? S sir, th thirty seconds, maybe fifty. Guys, yeah, less than a minute. T2L, please be advised we've been out of contact with you for sixteen hours, give or take over. S sir, that can't be right. You were just. Listen, I don't know what the shit's going on out there, but this is what I want you to do. Get to the bottom of the fucking stairs, search the hold, report back as soon as you get there, and then get the fuck out. Do I make myself clear? Sir, yes sir, out. Inconsequential audio deleted. Sir, we're apparently at the bottom of the ship now, five floors down by our count. Standard for our cargo vessel is size. We're approaching the hold now and… T2L, this is HQ, and something is odd about the door, sir. Details, T2L. Define odd. Well, it's pristine, sir. The rest of the ship is something of a shithole, but this door looks like it just came out of the metal press. Noted, T2L. Proceed through using maximum caution. Weapons ready. Sir, yes sir. Proceeding to open the door. Background lock system can be heard disengaging. We're looking into the hold now, sir, and moving forward. Remaining silent for now, T2L. Focus on searching the hold and getting topside. Background sound of door slamming closed and lock system rotating back into place. The fuck, did you close that? No sir, it did on its own. What the hell? We appear to be locked in now, HQ, but we can see daylight above us, so we can probably rappel out if the door won't… What is that? HQ, there appear to be people down here with us. Estimated fifteen or so people in the corner, huddled together. They look injured. We're approaching. Hey, that's Don. Don, man, wake up. Wake. Oh, oh, fuck. HQ, come in. Come in, HQ. Come in. T2L, this is HQ. What is it? We found a salvage team and the first team. They're here, and I don't know if they're alive or not, but they're. T2L, they're what? T2L, come in. Wait, where did Ramses go? He was right. Daniel? Vincent? What the fuck? HQ, come in. We just lost three. No, four. Four members. T2L makes sense. What did you mean, lost? I hear no weapons fire. They're just gone, sir. They were standing right behind us at flank and they're just gone. Spencer? What? Someone shine a light on Spencer. Where'd he go? Son of a bitch. T2L, what's going on in there? HQ, we've lost four men, apparently. They were just at the rear of us and now they're gone. Unknown sound similar to sliding metal. T2L, T2L, respond, respond. Where the hell did he go now? HQ. Come in, HQ. T2L, we're here. Please respond. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. They responded, guys. HQ responded. HQ, this is Baker, and I'm here with Jensen and Thomas from Team 2 sent to… We know who you're with, Baker. We were just talking to T2L about ten seconds ago. Where is… H HQ. We haven't heard from you in two weeks. We're out of rations, though. We found some food in one of the crew rooms. T2L had been dead since we were in the hold. He he went to investigate the people in the hold, and as soon as he approached them, that hatch in the back, it flew open, made a huge noise. We all turned to look at it, then back to T2L, and he was gone. Him and those people in the corner just gone, like the others. We searched the ship up and down, up and down, but never found him. Did you return to the surface for supplies, Baker? That ship should only be five floors at mo We We never thought to do that. That ship is at least thirty floors HQ, at least, but we found a crew quarters with food and we've been… Baker, our first team reported that ship had been ashore for at least thirty years, maybe more. What exact food did you find there that was edible? Baker? Thirty years? Baker, listen closely. I want you and whoever is left to get topside immediately. We are dispatching rescue team to… Gunshots. Gunshots. Baker! Gunshots. Baker, come in. What the fuck's going on over there? 
A third team of heavily armed recon units was dispatched to the SCP-455 site and investigated a cargo hold from above deck using high-powered flashlights and flares. No trace of any life within the hold, nor was there any trace there had ever been life there. Reports indicate a layer of dust and rust approximately to be an inch thick as determined by the cloud and dispersal caused by dropping of flares into the hold. Team 3 was recalled and a high-priority search team deployed to SCP-455 for deeper investigation as to the fate of all three missing groups. Team 3 after the failure of the first two teams dispatched to SCP-455, a third team was put together and sent. This team was comprised of more veteran members with far more experience exploring and investigating sites of interest or risk. This team was comprised of five persons and included an additional technician who would remain outside SCP-455 at all times to maintain communications linked to the team. Unknown to Team 3, a fourth team coded as Ripcord, comprised of five members as well, was put on standby on site approximately ten miles away. Their purpose was emergency evac of Team 3 should it become necessary, and they were to proceed to SCP-455 sites immediately after Team 3 entered it to reduce response time. Team 3's issued gear included two separate video recording units, one issued to the leader, T3L and one to a video specialist, T3V. This was deemed necessary due to the lapses in time experienced during Team 2's investigation. One member of Team 3 was instructed to enter SCP-455 through the cargo loading area directly and would be tethered to land by a pulley system. T3L, this is HQ. We are online receiving feeds over. Roger, HQ. This is T3L. We are preparing to enter the ship via the stairs. Evans is in position at the cargo hold. Understood. Proceed through both entrances and move directly to the cargo hold to rendezvous with Evans. T3V is recording his descent and all floodlights are active within the hold as well as the ones in the deck. Team 3's primary force proceeded down the stairs into SCP-455 while its secondary unit descended into the cargo hold where Team 2 disappeared. Within three minutes of descending into SCP-455, the primary force's video feed ended. The secondary force experienced no issues at all and waited in the cargo hold under the observation of T-3V, who recorded what consisted of five minutes of Evans walking in circles, dancing a brief jig and waving up at the camera. HQ considered sending T-3V to investigate the stairs, but it was decided that full attention should be paid to Evans, who was within SCP-455 and experiencing no anomalous activity. During mounting concern on whether to abort or proceed with the mission, T-3L's video feed returned. T-3L responded immediately over, we lost feed to you, what happened? HQ? HQ come in, for God! You're there, oh God. This is T-3L. We've lost two men, somehow the rest of us are still alive, this place, it's… it's… T-3L, how much time has passed for your unit? T time? Ten hours, sir. We came down here ten hours ago and… Now slow down, T-3L. Are you in a safe location at this current moment? Yes, we… we're fine in this room. Seems to be food storage. Touch nothing in that room, T-3L, and listen closely to me. The mission has been in progress for five minutes. Evans is in the hold, apparently doing the hammer. Now, now listen. I want you to detail to me exactly what has happened, and do not leave that room. Do not eat anything in that room. Take a breath, secure the entryway, and talk to me. T-3L explained that they had proceeded down twenty floors within the ship when divers had established that it can't possibly have more than six from the exterior. During this time, T-3V was instructed to raise Evans back out of the cargo area and secure him topside. Okay, okay, relax, relax, okay, HQ, okay. We proceeded down the stairs as normal, nothing seemed out of the ordinary until we noticed we had gone down far more flights than it should have taken to get to the bottom to enter the cargo area. We sent Eric up to retrace our steps and he was only able to go up two floors. We had to descend it at my count at least fifteen. There was no hatch back to the surface, the stairs just went up to the ceiling and ended. We could hear his every word from his location. Eric then said the hatch to that floor was open and he saw someone in it leaning against a wall. They were well within earshot of it as well, but hadn't reacted to any of our conversation. Keep going, T-3L. So Eric, he goes through the hatch to try to figure out who this person is, they hadn't moved, hadn't shown any hostility, and according to him they weren't even looking our direction, like we didn't exist to them. Suddenly we heard gunfire so the entire team rushed up two flights and just like he said, the stairs just stopped at the ceiling and the floor hatch was open. 
Nobody was in that hallway, not a soul. No Eric, no second person, no bullet shells, nothing. Nothing but the walls. The walls? The walls were… wrong. Hazy, like you were viewing them through a gas leak. They were flowing and fluid, just wrong. I closed the hatch. I… I don't know why I didn't go in and look for Eric, but I just… I felt like I couldn't. I wrote him off as lost immediately. I wasn't going in there or sending any of my men in there after him. Understood, T3L. Keep going. So the rest of the squad, we go back down the stairs, can't go up, not going in that hallway. All the rest of the floors were closed off, we went down maybe ten more flights, then the stairs started changing. They were solid metal, like aluminum, but now there were holes in the steps, and the metal looked rusted in some places. Old. Like the rest of the ship. Up until now, everything seemed rather clean. It didn't dawn on me immediately that the clean parts were actually stranger than the old parts. We found a food storage area down here. Everything seemed in good shape, but we didn't touch any of it yet. I read the Team 2 logs. I sent a man out into the hall to see what we could do on this floor. There seems to be a series of ladders in a group at the far end, but the entirety of this floor is food storage. It actually doesn't make any sense why there are so many of these rooms. I'm talking over twenty on this one floor, and they're all big enough for ten people to stand inside and have room to move. Some of them are locked, probably for the best. And the ladders? We haven't gone down them yet. Wanted to see if we could get someone from the outside first. Down? They go down? What the flaming shit is going- Okay, sweet dapper Jesus of the Gentleman's Club, look, I don't want to put any of you at risk, but we need to find you a way out of there. If you can't go back up, and you can only go down, only send one man. T3V and Evans are topside and perfectly fine. We're sending a diving crew around the ship exterior to see if we can pinpoint your location inside it using thermal. Understood, sir. Contact with T3L was lost after this transmission and remained disconnected for 12 hours. Divers around SCP-455 could not effectively scan the ship wreckage through thermal as the ship exhibited temperatures far higher than the water surrounding it. At sunrise, T3V and Evans were ordered to return to SCP-455 and reinvestigate the ship to the cargo hold. Upon activation of the cargo lights, all missing members of T3 were found within the cargo hold in an apparently catatonic state. Only the member Eric, who went missing per the Team 3 recordings, was unaccounted for. All remaining members remained in a state of stasis until removed from the ship and left undisturbed for approximately one hour. All recall moving down dimension ladders in the last transmission, but nothing after that point that would lead to them being in the cargo hold. Team 3 exploration ended and robotic exploration is now a viable option. Exploration Log Record 4553 Central Record Notation Following documents contains the whole and entirely of Exploration Log Record 4553. Omissions are as follows. Key names as detailed in CR Law 18813D, Subsection 4. Key dates as detailed in CR Law 18817E, Subsection 5-8. O5 level discretionary omissions as detailed in CR Law 137A. Requests for omitted data may be remanded to Central Records for address during quarterly review hearings. Emergency recall may be granted on direct approval from three O5 command members. Exploration team personnel consist of three Mobile Task Force Zeta-9 members, Mr. A, Mr. R, and Ms. S. Two agents, Mr. G and Sir K, and one Class D subject, D-11. The team is equipped with basic Foundation equipment package for semi-aquatic hostile environment exploration, in addition to the Mark V Heavy Recon Nautilus-class suits issued to Zeta-9 team members. Two mobile recon vehicles, commonly called MARVs, are also issued. Mission time begins at 0800 hours on MARV-1 malfunctions during initial transfer of team from observation platform to SCP-455 and is recalled. MARV-2 continues normal operation and remains in the water as the team climbs into the deck of SCP-455. Holy hell, how is this heap even staying afloat? It's not floating, it's grounded out. This is just the part that sticks up. Is it even safe to walk on? What if it gives way? Oh, relax, big boy. You've been on deck for over 30 seconds. You already beat the last team's time. Radio silence for ten seconds. Team proceeds to the cabin area near the center section of SCP-455, with MARV-2 following at sea level. Oh no. Hell no. Not a chance. You can shoot my happy ass, but I'm not going down there. It's not a request. Walk or be strapped to the MARV and floated. Your choice. What a bullshit way to make parole.
Okay, kiddos, mask on. Rats, canned air from here out. R, is your seal still good? Let me check. Good. G, get those tanks on D-11. Team proceeds down the main stairwell of the cabin area. Area below is mostly flooded. Marv-2 joins team via a large puncture below the waterline. Nothing weird yet. We have a small chamber with halls off to left and right. Marv-2 appears to be working fine. Hi, guys. I say left. Left keeps us in the ship proper. Right seems to be snaking off outside physical dimensions. We go right. We are under advisement to explore the extra-dimensional segments for possible details. No, we go left. Right will take us down the rabbit hole is screwed much, much too fast. This is not a discussion. Listen, asshole, I… the fuck is… S. Let it go. It's not… I will… Touching my foot… Guys? Sudden burst of radio static, along with several inarticulate voices and the sound of grinding metal, continues for eight seconds. Jesus, did we just… rock? Hey, is there any record of movement in 455? Not a one. Guys, can you still see us? Any movement from 455? Base team reports zero movement of any kind from or around SCP-455. Where is the Class D? Several seconds of radio silence. I had eyes on him the whole time. He was against this wall. What? What is… Oh, are you kidding? R, get your pick and get that out of the wall. Metal can't do that. It's like it's rusted the tooth out right along with it. It's like it's been there for ages. Three seconds of radio silence. D-11 is now missing, presumed dead or unable to be retrieved, proceeding down right hallway. Let's move. Team proceeds down hallway, followed by MARV-2. Video data shows hallway slightly tilted to the right with 80% flooding. Team is equipped with wetsuits and air tanks. All equipment appears to be working normally. Shit, we have contact. Let me… oh. Reporting. Water appends to end abruptly at the end of the hall. It appears some sort of force is keeping the water out of the next chamber. The division is very precise and can be crossed without incident. It's like an invisible force. Christ, the room's so damn blue, it's really bright, almost looks fresh. Dead end, too, looks like we have to go left after all, but… The hallway's gone. The fuck, the shit. Visual contact with team is suddenly lost for two seconds. Once contact is resumed, MARV-2 shows a flooded cargo section of SCP-455. No trace of team is seen anywhere. MARV-2 is unresponsive to controls for 22 seconds. MARV-2 suddenly accelerates at a much higher velocity than it's capable of, impacting with a rusted wall. Video continues for four seconds after impact. Plant matter observed during the last two seconds of video matches no known species and appears exceptionally hostile. Base team is unable to send transmissions to exploration team. The uh, entry is now gone. It appears the door now opens onto a shaft with several ladders going down. The top of the shaft is in line with the top of the hatch door. There appears to be water leakage from several seams in the roof, which… I can't see bottom, I mean at all. That thing goes down a mile. Which from flaking rust falling as well, the marv appears to have vanished as well. Okay, we go down and look for the nearest exit point or way up. If we don't find anything in half an hour, I want R and S to start excavating charges on a wall until something opens up. Roger the hell out of that. I'll start now if you like. Everyone down the hole, watch your feet. If anything feels weak, skip to the next rung. I want safety lines in every… Several seconds of metallic screeching along with two bass throbs. Contact is lost for four seconds. Down, 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 down. God, it's closing up. It's… It's my shepherd. I shall… Blow the floor for fuck's sake. Get out. Eighteen seconds of radio silence. It's in his bloody eye. It's in… Help him up. Just get him out of here. Mary fully graced the… Four heavy bass throbs followed by screeching. Sound appears to be comprised of many individuals, with many non-human animal me mechanical sounds being isolated. In weeks. I can't find him anymore. The way is too curved. I can't drag. Radio silence for eight seconds. The other day, upon the stair, I met a man who wasn't there. He wasn't there again today. Oh, how I wish he'd go away. Laughter for several seconds. Oh God, make it stop crying. Mission called as failure at 813. Sporadic contact made over the last two weeks, recorded as follows. My foot is evaporating. Help, 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 help. Humming tunelessly. There. Just an illusion of a fish. Oh it, oh Jesus, please. Laughter. Twenty seconds of a single, sustained scream. Yes, I j Home. I want my home. I, I don't want to feel the rust in me anymore. I Soft crying, barely audible. Uh, it, I shot it. I… Uh, maybe we haven't tried up in a few days. 
I'll eat it but not be because… It's cold. No radio contact with team reported beyond this point. Radio monitoring is ongoing. Single report. One month after mission end. A uh, Miss S observed waving from the deck. Report filed by single watch guard and not verified by any other sources.